Welcome to Classics Confidential. Hello, how are you? Uh, today um, I'm talking uh, with Professor Nancy Rabinowitz uh, from Hamilton College. Uh, this is actually our second interview today in which we'll be focusing on some of the uh, teaching aspects um, of Nancy's work. Uh, so Nancy, how does your research feed into your teaching? Well, I should explain, I am a member of a very small comparative literature department at a small liberal arts college, which is in many ways unique, I think, to the U.S. Well, I don't know about unique. In any case, so I teach, specifically, I teach one tragedy course. Uh, in that course, I was trying to diversify the Well, I was trying to make it more global, mm -hmm. so I started doing reception work because it's called tragedy then and now at this point. And one of the texts that I came across was a Medea done by the Medea Project in San Francisco. Rodessa Jones, who is the coordinator and director and inventor of that project, works in prisons with incarcerated women, making art, making theater based on the women's stories, but five of the productions were based on Greek myth or tragedy. So that project dovetailed with my interest in doing work in prison. So I, t I was teaching the Medea, and I taught the Medea Project's version. Then, since then, I've been involved in a project of my own at a prison in upstate New York, teaching tragedy and other literature to these men, incarcerated men, ah. at a medium security facility. So, the third way, um, so we can talk about any of that that you want, but the third piece is that uh, with Fiona McCarty at Roehampton, I've put together a volume of essays on the difficult subjects that emerge when you teach Greek mm -hmm. or Roman text so that the point of that volume is to make clear that A, these texts are not mm -hmm. immune yes. to race, gender, sexuality, death, mm -hmm. disease, disability, but that they actually touch on these. And to help with case studies, help mm -hmm. faculty members figure out how to deal with it mm -hmm. when these things come up. Yeah, so that when the students um, bring it up in class yes. and how to deal with it sensitively. Right. Mm, that's very interesting. Um, in terms of different audiences, what sort of reactions did you get, say, from the women prisoners versus the male prisoners and then versus your own students? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I've never actually taught women in prison myself. But, so the project started because Rodessa was aware that these women had abandoned their children. Many of these women are in jail. Their children are with their grandparents, or who knows where, right? I mean, if they have grandparents, they're lucky. Mm -hmm. So she brought the Medea in, and she found that these women were totally unsympathetic. To Medea? Yes, they didn't see anything in common with her. And in fact, I think one of their self-defensive strategies was to distance it. Say, right. oh well, I would never do that. Me. And so then she asked them about the drugs and the prostitution, all that stuff, and what it had to do with the children. With the, so that was interesting. But um, the the other plays that she's done, one of which is pen, based on Pandora, and one based on Persephone and, and Demeter, um, called forth much more identification. Uh, Pandora, they really saw that they were used like she is, and then uh, Persephone, I mean, many of them are the lost daughters, yes, yes. and they are in the underworld, in the prison system. So that's quite interesting. My, the thing that's come up for me most vigorously is the difference between teaching 18 to 22 year old, fairly well off, even wealthy white kids and my male prisoners, mm -hmm. who are mostly black, and some of them are in for quite a long time. Mm 
And what they, the difference, most salient for me was, I'll just give you an example of the, of the Antigone, mm -hmm. where in my class at Hamilton, they are kind of divided, they have very little sympathy for Antigone, they have quite a lot of sympathy for Creon. Interesting. Yes, and um, they, re I mean, you never know what the quiet people are thinking, but anyway, the big, the, 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 the voice, <laughs> I was, you know, well, at, at prison, I think. <laughs> they have nothing good to say about Creon. <laughs> we had a great time. I, I don't know whether you know from Garcia Island too much, mm -hmm. but anyway, so we did the, them as a pair. And then I said to them, would you like to, uh, how would you like to, to produce <laughs> Antigone? Because I still had, I still had Rodessa Jones in mind. Oh, and they gave me exactly the response from the island. It's like, oh, I could never show my face if I could get it to the <laughs> and, the, you know, it was, it was hilarious, it was hilarious, and, and the, the man who was particularly challenged by this view of himself as a girl was huge, you know, <laughs> macho man, muscles uh, the size of, you know, well, anyway, so, and he was, he was fantastic, the reading he did was great. Fantastic. So, you know, I mean, Greek tragedy can speak to a number oh, of different Oh, audiences. yes, absolutely. What they saw in these plays, you know, the questions of masculinity, uh, Creon and Hymen relationships to, um, to their children, to their parents. I mean, and Agamemnon, they identified with uh, when somebody said, well, the watchman, he's like, if you leave your boy watching out over your, your girlfriend while you're in the joint. So they, so they saw that, they, that that Agamemnon was going to be like them, perhaps coming home, and that they couldn't trust anybody. Yeah, after a long absence. Yes, a long <laughs> absence, yes. Yep, so what are the women up to? Well, yeah, and you know, the other part of it is that, like Agamemnon, they might have thought that doing the drug deals uh, that they were doing largely was what they needed to do in order to take care of the family, which is what Agamemnon thinks, right? I mean, you need to do this war. Yeah. So it's it's very interesting, and I never would have thought of it, never in a million years. Well, I think that's one of the advantages of um, of reception. It, it sort of shifts your focus, and sometimes interesting questions mm -hmm. might um, come out of that yeah. investigation. You know, somebody asked me um, recently whether I found that they were resistant to this um, material, which mm -hmm. has been perceived as having a very strong class bias. Elitist. And, yeah, an elitist. And that, it just did not come up. Well, that's, that's wonderful, isn't it? I, I think that my, I had more liberal guilt about it <laughs> than they did have any kind of reaction. I mean, partly, this is, you know, not to, to our horn. Education really does do the things that we say. Yeah. It really can open people's minds. Yes. And that's what they see. They, so you know, it's not, of course, uh, the way you would teach it in a classics MA. Right? Yeah. There wasn't much background, uh, not much historical specificity. I wanted them to respond. Yeah, it's, it's about the texts themselves. Yeah, I mean, they're classics yeah. for a reason, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, they, well, you know, of course, there were many reasons. They've been helped along by, uh, you know, many factors. That, you know, when I put on my other hat of how does this come to be yeah. the classics. But still, for them, it did not... They see the wealth, they see the class, but it doesn't alienate them. It did not alienate them. Oh, that's wonderful, and I think it speaks to the power of these wonderful um, dramatic texts. Yeah, and also, you know, dramatic texts allow you to read them aloud. Mm -hmm. In fact, force you to read them aloud. Yes. Because um, you, they couldn't understand them without. Really yeah, and I think they, they actually, they are designed to work. Yeah, you know, that's right. That's what I say to them. You know, this is not, you know, because they were intimidated. Mm -hmm. I, this is not meant to be, you know, out there in your ear. It's supposed mm -hmm. to get you. Yes. And so I... It got them. Excellent <laughs> success. <laughs> well, thank you very much. You're so welcome. Really a great pleasure. Really a great pleasure. Thanks so much, Anastasia.